Okay. We're going to start again uh, in verse 17 of this Psalm 9. Um, the Lord is revealed in making judgments. By the deeds they do, the wicked are trapped. So God does deeds and they reveal his beauty, his wonder, his love, his mercy. The evil do deeds and they are shown up for who they really are. And uh, action speaks louder than words. Huh? By the deeds the wicked do, they are trapped. And so then, go on from there um, to Sheol. Uh, they return or they go. They will. They depart. Uh, all those who forget God. Now what does it mean to forget God? How do we forget God? We get so used to distraction. Pleasure, movies, latest news, a bigger car, whatever. That we're not thinking straight anymore. And you could go through a week and never give God one thought. That's what it means to forget God. The most real reality in your life, infinitely real, infinitely present, infinitely loving, you see? And we forget Him. Uh, um, to Sheol, the wicked will depart. All the nations that forget God. That's interesting. How do you forget God? Well, you just never pray. You're preoccupied with the things of this world. And little by little, uh, you're, you're trapped. Now, God can do many things. He can give you measles or something worse. And you got to stop and say, my life is a disaster. I'm not even going in the right direction. What a grace that would be, right? Uh, because the wicked go to Sheol. All the nations that forget God. For the needy will never be uh, forgotten. The avion, the poor, the, the needy. That's a good translation. For the needy will never be forgotten. Nor will the hope of the afflicted ever fade. Isn't that beautiful? God never forgets. Okay. Now there's two more lines to finish this song. Kuma, Adonai, kum. Kum means stand up. Uh, for instance, in uh, modern Hebrew, when we want to say Christ is risen, we say HaMashiach kum. The Lord's standing, the Lord's risen, the Lord's upright, however you want to say that, you see. Kuma Adonai, uh, arise, let no mortal man prevail, and let the nations be judged in your presence. Huh? The Goyim, all the Goyim will be present, you see, before your face. And then finally, strike them with terror, Lord, show the nations they are only human. Enush uh, Hema, that they are just human beings. And that's the way the psalm ends. You see, it's a psalm uh, of King David, it says, but probably not, but we don't know. But it's a meditation, you see, uh, on uh, good and evil. And it's telling us, you see, uh, let's just look over some of those lines in the few minutes we have left here. Uh, the directions for the leader, according to Mutlaben, Mismo de David, a, a Psalm of David. Maybe. But who knows? I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Think of that. You know, 
there's a song, the exact number, I'm afraid I've forgotten, I think it's about 13 or 14, but it talks about the deceitful. Call lev v'lev yedeberu. They speak with heart and heart. They got a heart they put on to make you think they're sincere, and they have a real heart where their real plans are. And it's sort of hidden behind the other heart. Lev v'lev. Heart and heart. So which one is real? You've got to take time to discern. Because people can be saying very heartfelt things, apparently, but that's not where their heart is. And that's why it says here, you see, that the, the, uh, the wicked speak with heart and heart. The uh, cola and so forth. And so, this comparison between walking the straight path of Christ and being a liar. And that's basically the psalm. So it's an examination of conscience for us. Uh, pick up any good translation uh, and read it. But read it slowly. And for those of us who uh, are obliged to the bravery, uh, you know, this is uh, Monday of week one, the Office of Readings is where we say this song. Be ready for it. Examine your conscience and let the words, the light, the fire, the brilliance illumine your heart. So when you finish this psalm, you say, I repent. I'm a liar. I'm a crook. I don't speak the truth. I don't mean the truth. I'm always trying to protect myself. I've got to stop that. Thank you for this gift of this psalm, which can be a medicine for me. I can say this psalm and mean it because it is the word of God. God gave us this word through whoever wrote it. Tradition says David. Whoever wrote this psalm, God gave it to us. Why? so that we could have purer hearts. We could see lev v'lev, heart and heart were speaking. Heartfelt, really, but an agenda behind it. And that's wrong. How do we ever get out of it? Well, I'm sure we all know people who have very pure hearts. And when they speak, they're all right there. And because of that, we relax and take in what they're saying, saying what they're feeling, but they're intending their love. It is such a beautiful thing to have to meet somebody with a pure heart, a pure heart that intends God, that intends the good of the neighbor. You see, a pure heart. And that's why even in the psalm, uh, 51 God create a heart because you see bara is the word for, for to create bara only God can bara only God can do this so when I pray I'm saying only you can make my heart pure please do it change me change the way I think, the way I, I um, protect myself, the way I'm not truthful, the way I'm always got an angle. Lev tahur barali Elohim. Amen.